We're going to get our jobs back. And Acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Elaine Duke says nearly 22,000 federal personnel are on the ground ready to assist. I urge everyone impacted by the storm to continue to pay attention to your state and local officials. They will let you know when it's safe to return home. Be patient. At least 11 deaths have been confirmed so far in the U.S. President Trump is set to host a bipartisan working dinner with six senators tonight at the White House to talk tax reform. The guest list includes three moderate Democrats, West Virginia's Joe Manchin, North Dakota's Heidi Heitkamp, and Joe Donnelly of Indiana. Russian smugglers are reportedly helping North Korea get around new U.N. economic sanctions. U.S. law enforcement officials tell the Washington Post that Russian entrepreneurs are using the sanctions to turn a profit, setting up front companies to conceal transactions and launder payments. A pastor featured in the 2014 documentary Fight Church is accused of inappropriately touching women. Lisa Carter has more. Victory Church pastor and MMA fighter Paul Burris was arrested late last week by Monroe County, New York Sheriff's deputies after two women claimed he had forcibly touched them. A major telethon event will take place tonight to raise funds for those hit by Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. The hand-in-hand benefit for hurricane relief will be broadcast at 8 p.m. Eastern on all major networks as well as social media. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. This segment of broadcasting brought to you by Tender Hearts TLC Incorporated. Tender Hearts, the helping hands for your loved ones, where they understand it can be difficult to find time in your already busy schedule to attend to all the needs of your aging loved one. Tender Hearts will be there for your loved one when you can't be. Tender Hearts TLC helps your aging loved ones stay in their home as they specialize in tender, loving, 24 hour service including transportation to doctor's appointments, medication reminders, meal preparation, light housekeeping, and assistance with activities of daily living such as hygiene and grooming, orientation, and companionship. We thank Tender Hearts for their support of this station, Tender Hearts TLC, where they don't just care for your loved one, they give them tender, loving care. For more info, you can reach them at 909-528-9759. That's 909-528-9759 for Tender Hearts, TLC. The Tri-City Shopping Center in Redlands is home to some of the best bargain shopping in the region. Cityware, Style for Less, and Dollar Tree, to name just a few. Friendly shop owners and staff are waiting for you to stop in for the many specials and bargains they're excited to share. The Tri-City Shopping Center is located just off I-10 between Alabama and the Tennessee exits in Redlands. Make it your home for all your shopping needs, and you'll know why the Tri-City Center is called the Mall with a Heart. This is Dick from Carpet Masters. Carpet Masters has been serving the Inland Empire for over 60 years. We are locally owned and operated by the Stevens family. We not only clean carpet and furniture, we clean many loose rugs, including oriental rugs. Oriental rugs are cleaned in our modern facility where the fringes are cleaned by hand, then hung in our modern facility to dry. We do not use steam cleaning to clean your fine furniture. Furniture is cleaned by hand using the same absorption cleaning used in the White House. Some furniture we bring into our plant to clean properly. We normally use two men on each cleaning job using the extraction method. There is nothing that would clean carpet better for our customers. Our job is to clean properly with quality first. Google Carpet Masters San Bernardino and give us a call or go to carpetmasterssocal.com. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Take a walk on the wild side Will the birds and the bees survive Right before me, my newfound hippie side Once ignore these conspiracies online Out the window, footage of the fear Sign me up now, make sure you use your smart Take a walk on the wild side Will the birds and the bees survive? Children lie to see Mother Nature's side. 
Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Hey, welcome everyone. This is Smart Health Talk. I'm your host, Elaine McFadden. And uh, we got a great show planned for you today. What can I say? You know, lots of information. And we got great shows planned for the future, too. Boy, I've been lining up some incredible guests that we're going to be having. Uh, we've got Dr. Stephanie Seneff. Um, she is, those of you that have listened to our show, uh, know that Dr. Stephanie Seneff, who is MIT uh, researcher, um, she is um, just loved by so many people. She has been doing all this research on pesticides. And for those of you that have not tuned into Smart Health Talk, uh, with myself, your host, Elaine McFadden, who's also a registered dietitian with a master's in public health. And what does that mean? That means I care about you. That's right. Care about you, care about your health, care about whether you live or die. And if you get sick, if your family, someone that you love gets sick, all of these things are so important um, to our lives, everyday lives, the things that mean the most to us. And that's what we talk about here on Smart Health Talk, how to make our world a better place, how to leave a world for our children where they're going to prosper and survive. And those of you that have, you know, been, um, you know, obviously everyone has been tied to the television, watching the events of the past two weeks, which have been absolutely horrific. Uh, we have had, you know, massive amounts of hurricanes. And the thing is, on, we've been on the air. This actually, this month is our seventh anniversary. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Yay! Smart Health Talk! Seven years! <laughs> and through those seven years, we have had so many incredible guests, it's such a diversity, and it's all right there on our uh, kcaaradio.com website um, under Tuesday, 4 o'clock. You can find all my podcasts from those seven years. And I tell you, it is, it, it's really a, a treasure of information. And that's not because of me. That's because of my guests. My guests are just the best. And another guest that we did have on before and is on our website under the tab Vanishing, Vanishing Bees, uh, Dr. Jonathan Lundgren, who is a USDA scientist. Um, he was honored by the White House. He's like the best of the best. He, he's the perfect example on why everyone should not believe what you are hearing. Uh, do not believe that poison is safe for your body. And that is pesticide. And it's on, if you're not eating organic, I guarantee you you're eating multiple pesticides on virtually everything that you're eating. And he found, and we were, you know, I'm sure the listeners are, have heard about the bees too. Bees, butterflies dying in millions and billions. And monarch butterflies right here in our own Inland Empire used to be in populations of the millions. They used to migrate from the ocean. They still do, but you hardly ever see them. And there's so little left because everyone is spraying pesticides. Everybody, farmers, uh, the city, the county, your neighbors, landscapers, all of these people are spraying pesticides just at will. And these pesticides are causing cancer. Roundup, which is used by so many different people, is on the Prop 65 list for California as cancer causing. The World Health Organization, IARC group, that is the, their cancer arm, had the best oncologists in the world determine that Roundup was cancer causing. And they didn't just look at glyphosate. They looked at all the other secret ingredients they don't even tell you about. You know, they can even, I had a guest on my show who was editor of an organic magazine out of Palm Springs, and she informed us that nuclear waste is actually something that they will throw in the pest pesticides because they don't want to pay for the disposal of it. And you know what? I have the perfect, the perfect example of why, why that, it, why I can prove that. But first, I got to type in my password. <laughs> I thought that I already did it, but 
Uh, let me get to it. Okay, because I saved those right here. And then we also got some stuff to celebrate. So can you get my, um, my songs? My songs ready. Can you pull those up, Brandon? Brandon's our engineer here at KCAA. Hey, Brandon. Hey, uh, which one are you looking for? Well, um, I, I'm not really sure just yet. All right. Uh, but, well, I want I want to celebrate one. I want something that we're going to sell. It might be um, Christina Aguilera. Let's see. I had I did have um, a list of all my different things here. Let me see. Okay, it was under the folder Smart Health Talk. Of course, I can't find these things when you need them. Uh, yeah, there should be a Christina Aguilera song in there. Do you see that one? Um, all right. If I remember right, the Christina Aguilera ones are labeled Alea, right? Um, I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to just because we well just get it ready because we're gonna we're gonna celebrate and I'm gonna I'm gonna look over here and see if I can um, I can find the one okay here here we go and I can actually even send that to you oh yeah if you can email it to me I'll just oh it fight it's called fight song all right I got it okay yeah so just get that ready because I got a big announcement here do, 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 do. everyone this is a big win I mean this is like historical stuff that just happened and you when you hear you are going to be so happy because of what the kind of things that are happening right now um, it, it, it's just unbelievable because we are experiencing these catastrophic weather events of which smart health talk has been warning people all of these years that we have been on we have been trying to warn everyone and when you're looking at a carbon air carbon content of 410 parts per million which has not happened since dinosaurs walked the earth you i mean it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out rocket scientists to figure out that something is going to happen there the you really can't even predict it but you know that something is probably going to happen that has never happened before because we are at so much carbon in the air that has never happened before since the dinosaurs. So obviously we weren't around at any time when it was 410 parts per million, but the dinosaurs were. And so it started to happen. We started to see weather events and people are like, oh, it's a cycle, it's a cycle, it's a cycle. Well, in Texas, they had three 500 year floods that happen once every 500 years, three years in a row. So that right there, red flag. And there's something called the precautionary principle. And that is where when something starts to look like there could be a possibility that it could lead to something catastrophic, like bringing our whole planet down and wiping out the human race that maybe you should slow down a little bit, step back, and maybe stop doing what you're doing and take it really start to dig deep and find the truth. And luckily, we have so many incredible nonprofits in this country. We have had many of them on our show. And what they say over and over again is pesticides are destroying our planet and our health. And Dr. Jonathan Lundgren, who I mentioned earlier, I said he was a USDA scientist. He was honored by the White House. He discovered, he dug deep, he looked for the truth. And what did he find? He found that the allowable amount of pesticide, this is what the government says is safe for, for the environment, for the bees, the butterflies, for us, is one part per billion pesticides in whatever so they're saying that you know that's a safe amount that's where we draw the line and you can't have more than that uh, you can have less but not more well he found that even at one part per billion we were still killing the bees and the butterflies so that's not a safe amount it's not and that's what he found out and just think about that. Think about how huge 
that fact is. If Dr. Lundgren, who was honored by the White House, starts talking to the media and his peers, which is what he does as part of his job and had did for years, about that fact that even at one part per billion, we're still killing the bees, we're still killing the butterflies. What do you, how do you think the pesticide company is going to react to that? Oh, they're not going to want it. Oh, heck no. That's the last thing they want. And so what happened to Dr. Lundgren? Who did nothing wrong. He was suspended from his job for telling the truth. And luckily, the peer group, the Public Employees um, Environmental, uh, I can't remember the <laughs> what the R stands for, but peer, P-E-E-R, um, they, they uh, actually help whistleblowers. And so um, they were working with Dr. Lundgren. I'm not really sure what the outcome of that is, was, excuse me, or is, maybe it, they haven't even gotten to it yet. But I do know that Dr. Lundgren is now doing some of the most incredible work. So, you know, things work in mysterious ways. And, you know, Dr. Lundgren was, you know, lost his job there, suspended, never allowed to come back. Um, and it actually worked out to be a good thing. Because in North Dakota, he is, is it North Dakota or South Dakota? <laughs> um, he has started Blue Dasher Farm. And if you look that up, Blue Dasher Farm, and you can find Dr. Lundgren, Bug Lundgren, Lundgren L-U-N-D, uh, G-R-E-N, which is a very good name because that's the name of the owner of KCAA is Fred Lundgren. So <laughs> I don't know if they're related or not, but <laughs> they're both really smart. And there's a great article by um, our Mr. Lundgren in the Huffington Post. Um, I just got to give a little plug here uh, about who really benefits from these catastrophic events. And I guess the Small Business Administration was sending out emails to encourage businesses to take out loans even before the, the hurricane hit, wanting them to get in debt. And I guess there is some things that happen. Uh, you need to read the article. Just look up Fred Lundgren on the Huffington Post and or I'm not sure if there's a link on our website. <clears throat> but anyway, um, there's, you know, there's all these extra fees that are charged and, and it is not a good thing for the business owner, bottom line. And the government is trying to take advantage. So there are, there's, it, it's like big corporations want this to happen. Uh, on 60 Minutes, they reported on how the Arctic is melting. And now we can go places we could never go before. And Russia is claiming the Arctic for their own. And they are setting up weapons there. And now they're going to start to drill oil there. You know, just think about it. Who really benefits from all of this? Oh, is it going to be the stockholders? Is that, is that who really benefits from all this? Is it really the people of this planet? It's the corporations, stockholders. That's the only one who I can think of would benefit because it's definitely not the rest of us. And I, that alone to me is motivation to reverse climate change. <laughs> I want the Arctic frozen again. I want people to, to leave it alone. I don't want Russia setting up weapons in the Arctic. And all of these things are happening because, and now these catastrophic events, billions and billions of dollars worth the damage there are people that are going to benefit from that. The government try, couldn't wait. They wanted to try and benefit. I tell you, they're like, we got to replace all this stuff. Well, we got to buy more mobile homes and all this stuff. Well, you know, oh, that's good for the economy because now, now we got to replace all this stuff. You know, so what? It, it destroyed, you know, people's lives, everything that they owned and even killed people. But we have been warning about this on Smart Health Talk. I can't tell you how many times I have posted uh, this very thing. It's just, uh, it's not if, it's when. And these are going to get more severe. We are at 410. We are set to hit 500. Can you even imagine what is going to happen if we were at 500 parts per million? We are supposed to be at 350. 
we were like at 185 for a very long time until the Industrial Revolution. And that's when it started to go up because we started pumping that, that carbon into the air. Well, what's also happening? Oceans are rising and islands are disappearing. Land is going to disappear. Having that oceanfront property isn't going to be such a great thing anymore. And there are counties that are adding up the numbers like Marin County. I mean, it was something, it was something, it was billions and billions of dollars, like hundreds of billions, something like that, uh, that are potentially in real estate and, and things that are worth uh, a lot, not only a lot of money, but irreplaceable things that we could never replace or bring back. And they, Marin County, um, I know the city of uh, Imperial Beach, there's one other county, they have filed a lawsuit against the oil and gas companies saying, you knew this, the research was there, you just hit it and you kept on doing it. You didn't care what happened. And that is exactly the way it is, everyone. That's the way it went down. That's the way it is right now. And we have to accept the truth. I tell you, I have to, re I've been reporting this for seven years. And the hardest thing is for me to have had to accept the truth so that I could turn around and tell it to you. We can't bury our head in the sand. And besides that, if you bury your head in the sand, your butt's up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good position to be in. <laughs> Actually, I heard that on a Hallmark movie. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. But, you know, this is, you know, I hate to have to talk about some of this stuff. It's very hard for me. I wish I could just be here with, okay, the la my latest recipe on meatloaf is do it this like this. You know, I, I'm a dietitian. you know. I want to talk about, like, fun stuff. But this is is so important everyone this could make or break uh, all it takes is one accident now earlier i was talking about nuclear waste okay where i have to find that um let me get to that i thought that i let me check my notes here okay Okay, well, San Mateo County, here I have it right here, $24 billion of assets at risk for San, San Mateo County. Uh, so they're filing a lawsuit along with Imperial Beach and Marin County. That was the other county um, that I couldn't remember. I mean, that, that is huge. Scientific predictions for sea level rise by 2,100 vary widely from less than a foot to as much as six feet if emissions continue unabated. In other words, we get to that 500 mark. Okay. Now, um, I was, okay, here, is this it? Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, I want to see if it was on the other page, too. Okay, San Onofre. Okay, everyone knows San Onofre. It looks like the tits, up, right? <laughs> you drive next to it along the highway, along the five there, uh, going from L.A. to San Diego. Uh, it's the five, right? San Onofre's on the five, Brandon. Do you remember? I think, uh, I think I got it right. I'm pretty sure it's the five. Anyway, San Onofre nuclear power plant. <laughs> okay. That um, They have been saving their nuclear waste for ever since, you know, they, they turned that thing on. And it's encased in cement sitting right next to the ocean. Okay, I just got a thumbs up from Brandon, it's the five. <laughs> uh, I haven't been down there in a while. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I know it's like towards San Clemente as well. We have nuclear power plants all over the world, thousands of them. And I guess that one of the, nu uh, one of the nuclear, I know that we were trying to shut down our nuclear power plants. I'm not sure if you're aware, but everyone knows Fukushima, right? It is still, pumping radioactive water into the ocean. It pretty much contaminated the whole Pacific Ocean. They are also collecting 
contaminated water from the nuclear reactor, just like at San Onofre. And they have tons of it. They have, guess how much they have? Um, oh, wait, let's see. Um, 3.5 million pounds of nuclear waste at the plant. That's what they're setting on. And it's just sitting there in concrete. And it's sitting on a fault. We have old nuclear power plants. They had one in Vermont. It was leaking radiation everywhere. And they, the nuclear power plant sued the state for trying to close them when they were contaminating uh, the waterways and the land with nuclear waste. This is what's happening. The corporations are in control. The corporations are calling the shots. They have all power because of Peoples United. Do we got that song? Because we got some really good news here. This is the fight song, everyone, because we all have to stand up and fight for our rights. The people have won. Yes, we won today, or yesterday, I guess it was. We won big time. And why is that? Because we have people in the state of California that will not back down, that stand up and fight for us, that are over there fighting for all of us, and you don't even realize what all of these people have been doing for us. They have been fighting against Citizens United, the ability for corporations to control our elections. It's not enough that we got the Russians controlling our elections. And when I heard that Facebook had taken a billion dollars or something from Russian advertisers to uh, create all these ads to influence uh, our election, I'm just thinking I'm going to be spending a lot less time on Facebook for one thing. I am not going to let them influence me with their ads that may be coming from some Russian company. If that's what they want to do, then I say, let's just friggin' boycott them. What do we do? What do citizens do to protect ourselves from this? From a billion dollars worth of ads on Facebook that were in our face, you know, programming our mind, influencing our thoughts, changing our decisions? I'm sorry, but I really take offense to that. I don't know, it kind of seems like a treason kind of thing to me. I, you know, I understand they want to feed their, their stockholders and that, and hey, a billion dollars is kind of hard to turn around, but, you know, what are you doing to America? And then they, they didn't even tell anyone until like, you know, what, a couple weeks ago or something? They kept it to themselves all this time. Oh, well, oh, yeah, you know, that might have had a little influence too, besides all the other things that they were doing. So who else were they paying? What other ads were paid for by Russians? It's not enough that we have them now. We're going to have um, corporate, we have corporations, the Co Koch brothers, you know, there's, um, I'm trying to remember, what's the name of that group that's even richer than the, the Co excuse me, the Koch brothers, I want to, <coughs> excuse me. Do you remember? Um, they're, they're the ones that finance Trump. They're actually uh, richer. And people don't, you know, I can't remember their name because people never hear about them. They never talk in public. <laughs> if you could look that up for me, Brandon. It's the, it's a, um, if you could maybe find that, it's a, uh, a family that's richer than the Koch brothers. And they are the ones that finance the Trump campaign. These are the people pulling the strings. These are the people making the decisions how we're all going to live and what, what laws are going to be passed. Did you find something? Yeah, the New Yorker has an article about a hedge fund manager named Robert Mercer. 
Uh, that's Is that the it. Guy? Yes. All right. Okay, that's it. The Mercers. Yes, that's who financed Trump's camp. He said he did it all. He didn't have any other people find. Yes, he had like the richest uh, family in the country financing him. The Mercers, who you never hear about. They never. They never do interviews. They don't talk uh, in in the public at all. Uh, but boy, oh boy, do they can pull the strings and control what's happening in this country and what decisions are making and who that person in the White House, um, whoever they are, uh, if they finance their campaign, I guarantee that they expect that person to be uh, making decisions that they approve. So what are we going to do? Because the Supreme Court did not help us. They're still going to allow corporations. They allow corporations to uh, not to get away with everything that we can't even go sue them because they're considered uh, peoplers. No, I know there's there's some reason that we can't we can't sue them. <clears throat> so they what they do is they get all these laws passed to protect themselves. Just like in Texas, what happened was that there was all kinds of chemicals that went into the water that people were walking through along with sewage and who knows what that these people were forced to walk through who knows what they were exposed to but the thing is these corporations used to have to report to the EPA any hazardous chemicals that they kept stored on their property but no not anymore because they managed to get laws passed that said you don't have to tell anyone anything. You can have whatever you want and you don't have to tell anyone anything. There are chemicals that are so toxic. We have, you know, these, um, these super, super fun sites, toxic waste sites. When I looked at how many in Georgia, there was like this map that showed all of these super fun toxic waste sites. There were hundreds of them just in the state of Georgia. I'm like, what the heck? You know, we're leaving, you know, 3.5 million, you know, pounds of toxic, uh, toxic waste right by the ocean ready or ready for an earthquake or a giant wave to like wash it away into the ocean. Uh, we're just taking all of these chances and, and we don't even have a place to take this stuff. That's why it's still sitting there. There is no approved toxic waste site in the country. So all of these nuclear sites are sitting on all of this nuclear waste because they have no place to put it. Yeah. And so any one of those sites, if they are hit, by something, all of that could be released into the environment. Again, not if, when. This will happen. And who knows what other, other countries are doing with their nuclear reactors. Why are we not shutting these nuclear power plants down when we have technology that allows us to not even need that, not even take that risk? Every single day, those nuclear power plants are operating. There could, they could be a terrorist target. They could break down. There could be one of these catastrophic weather events. They're getting older. They're leaking. Why are we not shutting them down and replacing them with green energy so we don't even have to take that risk? The UK wind energy is now cheaper than nuclear in the UK. Why are we not doing this, everyone? We need your voices. We need you to fight, just like these other people that were able to overturn. Well, they, they haven't done it yet, and they need your help. What has happened is AB 249. OK, let me, I want to get all my notes right here. OK. Um, So uh, there, let's see, let me get, make sure I got my first page here. Okay, AB 249 is the California Disclose Act. 
And if you if you want to go check it out, go to yesfairelections.org. How does that sound? Fair elections. I that is music to my ears because that is how we change our country. That is how we turn this into a country for the people, not a country for the corporations, which is what we are now. We are all slaves to whatever they want and whatever their money can buy, which can buy a lot. People can be bought so cheap. It just amazes me. Okay, so it's called um, the California Disclose Act and yes, fairelections.org is where you go and check it out. <clears throat> so there is a petition that you can sign. I think the petition is there. And what happened uh, that is like something that we should all be celebrating is that the Senate passed it four to 11 or something like, no, I don't think it was four to 11. I did see something here, let's see. Okay, I can't remember. Um, okay, this is what um, D, D. Marie, who is um, I'm trying to think how you say your last name. It's it's Italian. <laughs> um, I invite she she wanted to come on the show today, but she had a previous engagement. But what she is saying, she has been she is one of those people, along with a bunch of other people around her. So many people have been just working so hard to get it this far so that the Senate passed it and that we can actually have a chance to have elections in California that are not influenced by big corporate. You know, and, and the thing is, when we stand up as people, we are helping our politicians do their job. Do you think they want to be owned? I'm sure, you know, maybe some of them like getting the money that they get. But the thing is, the way we've got it set up, it's like who can get the most money? I say give everyone a certain amount of money and then you got to get a lot. You, every, it's a, like a fair playing field. Everyone has the same amount of money. And there's actually um, the Justice Democrats. There's a new group that's uh, trying to make it so that uh, anyone that want, that's going to run under their party cannot take corporate money. I love that idea. I want politicians that are there for the people, not as a puppet for corporations. That is why we have all of these regulations to keep our water clean, to keep our air clean, to quit putting pesticides that destroy our children's brain before they're even born, which is that chloropyrophrose <laughs> um, pesticide that Dow makes that Trump signed, even though we were going to get rid of it, he signed an order to allow it and to help the farmers. What about our children? What about suffering with an autistic child that's going to be special needs for the rest of their life? What about that? What about the people suffering from mental illness or cancer as a result of these pesticides? Those pesticides directly attack our child's brain in the womb. So they are at a disadvantage or autistic before they're even born. And we are allowing this. We can live without these pesticides. And I'll tell you that agriculture along with the oil and gas industry is the biggest contributor to global warming because they have killed, not only are they using all of these pesticides and emitting all of that into the air and contaminating everything, but they are killing the soil microbes, the very microbes that pull that carbon from the air and lock it in the soil. That's why we have this problem along with this overindulgence in oil and polluting, uh, polluting the air and coal and all of these other things that are, are there, there is a, a huge percentage of people in this country that are not breathing healthy air right now. And we were just gonna get ready to start to clean it up. And now it's gonna probably get worse. These corporations are now allowed to dump whatever they want in the water. 
whatever, and they don't even get penalized for it. There's no rules. Do whatever you want. I told you that like next week, we're going to have a woman from Montana. Uh, she is going to be explaining to us what is happening up there with the mining industry because they are dumping all of this toxic water into our most pristine rivers in our country, in Montana, going to kill the fish because they don't want to pay to have it disposed. We're creating these problems that we have not even thought, what are we going to do when we have this byproduct? They allowed nuclear with absolutely no plan on where to put the nuclear waste. After all these years we've had nuclear, we still do not have a designated place to take the waste. I, I don't know. To me, I, that makes me so incredibly angry because radiation is definitely a killer. And as a public health dietitian, I know what kind of damage that can do. Okay, there's like, yeah, there's some bad things out there, but radiation, hey, not good. And like when you contaminate something with that, it doesn't, it doesn't just like go away. It stays contaminated for a long, long time. Look at Chernobyl. Okay, um, we have to, we have to fight against this. So AB two forty nine passed the Senate. Now it's going to go for a signature um, to the governor's office. He has a fifty fifty record on these kind of issues. So it's up to us, everyone. We need to stand up and say we want this. We want corporations out of our out of our elections, out of making these decisions that affect us, citizens, not for the benefit of the corporation. I need you to really get on the phone, call the governor's office, tell him that you want AB 249 signed, that you want this these, this corporate money out of our elections. Please stand up and fight. They're hoping that you don't. That's what they want. I happen to be a rebel. I say I'm going to do just the opposite of what they want. I'm not going to be complacent. That's why I've been here in the seat for seven years talking to you guys, trying to get, get the information. They're never going to tell you on television. Because the sponsors don't want them to. But you get it right here. Because I care about you. And yeah, maybe this isn't so fun. And maybe I'm even kind of irritating. But you know what? I don't care. Because I am not here to be your friend. I am here to save your life. That, what, that is what matters to me. I'm here to save the life of the people that you love. I cannot do it alone. The people that helped get AB 249 passed by the Senate that worked their butt off, that got on the phones, and they need people on the phones right now calling because there are so many other people that don't understand what's going on. They need volunteers big time. Okay, where is that? Um, okay, hold on. I got the name of where... Okay, so I'm going to read what she told me about this AB 249 because this is some, this, I can't even tell you, this could change the world. And if California passes this, do you know what that's going to mean for the rest of the country? California has such a huge influence. If we hunker down and we get this done, other states will follow. This is how the people take back our country. Hit that phone. Volunteer to make a few phone calls. Donate an hour of your time even. This is how, this is, this is what's, how we're going to get it done. Not sitting on our butts being quiet. Okay, so now it has, uh, oh, I guess now it has to pass the, the assembly. See, I, I need to take a class in government. <laughs> I'm trying to learn all this stuff. It's like so complicated. 
Okay, so now it has to pass the assembly along with the review by the assembly elections committee. Oh, I thought it was going right to the governor. That's after this step. So it has to pass the assembly along with a review by the assembly elections committee. When it passes the assembly, it goes to the governor for, the, for his signature. So that's who you need to call everyone. You gotta call your assemblyman and the governor and tell them both what you want. You want corporations out of our elections. Uh, the bill has to be out of the legislature by this Friday, September 15th. So there's no time to waste. We've got to get this done, this done this week. The governor has till October 15th to sign or veto. We will be making calls to encourage him to sign. He has a 50-50 signature rate on campaign finance reform bills. If it becomes law, it will be in effect for 2018. Gosh, just, oh God, that would be so fantastic. I am so sick and tired of these, these election commercials over and over and over and nasty commercials that are generating hate and ruin my day. When we pass this AB 249, we will be free of that. Wouldn't that be great, everyone? I don't think I'm alone on this one. I know there's got to be other people that hate those freaking political commercials. And they're financed by the corporations and these billionaire people. Okay. Um, several coastal municipalities in California. Oh, this was about the, um, the lawsuits that we talked about. Okay, so we got, oh, I wanted to mention... Um, Okay, they're going up against the world's largest fossil fuel companies. This is with the, the lawsuit against the oil companies. Chevron, ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, Royal Dutch Shell. Um, the American Petroleum Institute, the U.S. Oil and Gas Association, both based in Washington, D.C., could not be reached for comment. Surprise, surprise. Yep, they, they want to keep their mouth shut about that, that's for sure. So, um, but, you know, kind of going back to this just a little bit, they're taking this whole, um, the strategy that they've used before to come after these oil companies uh, was kind of taught using the global warming kind of um, focus where this time uh, they're, they're going by the, the damage that's been being done. It, it's kind of like the same strategy that was used by the tobacco company, which... If I remember right, they were very successful. Oh yeah, like hundreds of millions of dollars. And that money was used to help other people quit smoking and for all kinds of great programs in California and other states around the country. And who out there would say that the tobacco company should not have to pay? These people have been getting away with polluting polluting around the world. Texaco got away with dumping massive amounts of toxic waste over in, I think it was Venezuela, and they took them to court, and Texaco won. Even after everything that they did, and all of these people got sick and cancer and destroyed all this land and the waterways, it went in the, wa it went in the rivers, and they just actually dumped it right in the river. And they've just been, there. there's oil spills all the time. I have a video on my YouTube, and please join me on, on my YouTube, everyone, and my social media. I tell you, I've, I've been a little bit slow lately because I've been so busy uh, with my monarchs. And those of you that have tuned in at KCAA Radio and are watching us on Ustream, which you can do. Yeah, you can just tune us in. We have our video right here and right in front of me. I have a this little um, kind of laundry kind of thing. And inside of it is a beautiful monarch butterfly. And it's one of eight that were born today in my kitchen. <laughs> well, actually in my living room. Um, they're now in my kitchen uh, on the screen door waiting for me to let them out. I like to, after they're born, I want to make sure that they're really strong and, and ready to go before I let them let them loose out into the world because unfortunately 
people all around me have been spraying pesticides and that's why I bring them inside. I can't trust anyone. I'll tell, I'll, I'll ask them, please don't do it. And then they, they do it. So I'm trying to bring the monarchs back to the Inland Empire because we used to have billions of them. And I have my, my one baby right here with me. And I actually raised 50 caterpillars. And that was crazy. <laughs> and I have five, five caterpillars right now, although one kind of disappeared. It might have went on his walkabout. They go on a walkabout and they make their little crystallis. And this one right here emerged from the crystallis. And it's, it's, I've got all these great videos I'm going to be putting on my Blue Monarch Project website. And if you go to bluemonarchproject.com, you can find out all kinds of stuff about monarch butterflies. And they used to be all over the Inland Empire. They used to cover cars. They used to be flying everywhere. And watching monarchs, watching the caterpillars, it is some of the, the best joy you could ask for. Those caterpillars are, they have personality. I tell you, they, they just make me laugh. They're so funny. They're, they actually make facial expressions and just do all kinds of crazy stuff. So when you got 50 of them crawling all over the place, it's, it, it's very entertaining. But it's a lot of work because you got to make sure everyone has enough milk leaf, milkweed leaves. And our goal, goal for Blue Monarch Project is 25,000 milkweed plants to be planted by the end of next year in the Inland Empire. And I may be I may be out there throwing some seeds <laughs> around some places too, but we're gonna we're gonna have a bunch of potted uh, milkweed uh, that we're gonna try to get out there to some of the nurseries. We're also um, we're also gonna be you know offering seeds to people and encourage them to plant plant in their yard. Actually, right now is the time to plant because then by February, when the monarchs come back it'll be grown big enough. So the one that I have right here in front of me could be the fourth generation for this year, which means the other three generations live for six weeks. And those are born after these come back from the ocean and lay eggs. And so this one could be the fourth generation that gets to fly to the ocean and live for several months, hanging out in eucalyptus trees and breathing ocean air. That sounds really great, doesn't it? <laughs> I would love it if my monarch got to do that. My All my other 50 monarchs, that they got to fly to the ocean, and then they came back and saw me in February and mated and laid eggs, and we start all over again. Only this time, we want to have way more than we had this year. And I started with zero because they sprayed for the citrus, the citrus trees last year for the Asian citrus psyllid, and they pretty much killed butterflies, bees, didn't see any more the rest of the year after I had 16 caterpillars on my plants. Wow. So I know that there's no doubt that um, pesticides are a big problem. And Dr. Lundgren, when he joins us, uh, it is going to be um, a real rebel. A, it, he's going to have so much great information on this because he did the research and he's doing his Blue Dasher farm which I mentioned earlier, and he's actually teaching other farmers how to farm the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Excuse me. And I just, um, he just came back from Southeast Asia, teaching a whole group in Southeast Asia how to be real farmers and do it and not need pesticides, not need fertilizers, not have to be expose yourself and your family and get a chance of dying of cancer yourself as a farmer. Our farmers should not have to die of cancer to grow food for us. And we should not have to eat poison food. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I happen to think that makes sense. And it's killing all of the beautiful things that make us happy. We are dumping a billion pounds a year just in the United States. And we could do all this without it. We don't need pesticides. The price of the price is actually going to start going down for organic food. And we can't even, we're not even growing enough in the U.S. for the demand. We need to start transitioning away from these pesticides that are causing climate change. We have 30% of the land is agricultural land on this planet. Just imagine how huge a potential that is. We're killing the soil microbes. We need, to, we need soil that is alive 
to grow our food because that is what gives us life. Please go and listen to Dr. Seneff's other interviews. You can find um, her picture on our smarthealthtalk.com website. Just click on that. Um, I have to add the one that we did a couple of weeks ago still, but um, we have so much information there. Please call your assemblyman, call the call the governor and tell them AB 249. You want him, the governor to sign it. You want the assembly to pass it. And in 2018, we can get these friggin' corporations out of our elections. Who does not want that? But it's going to take us. It's going to take the people speaking up. And I just really want to thank you. If you stayed with us for the show, I hope you're going to go to my Blue Monarch Project website <laughs> and um, email me, Elaine, at smarthealthtalk.com and ask me for milkweed seeds and I'll find a way to get them to you <laughs> and plant some milkweed and please choose organic food. If you, if you don't want to, if you don't want to get cancer and put these poisons in your body, organic, you can trust it. It is not GMO. GMOs are not allowed in organic and we support organic farmers. We support the businesses that care about us enough to not sell poison food and they make less profit. And I have a lot of respect for those companies and we can support them, not the, not the people that don't care about us and have lied and paid money to keep us from knowing what's in our food. General Mills, Kraft, Pepsi, Coke, all these people, that's what they did. So don't buy their products, boycott them. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Elaine McFadden. This is Smart Health Talk. We're on every Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Go find us at Smart. Uh, kcaradio.com or all our social media and send me an email anytime anyone okay all right thanks for listening bye-bye kcaa loma linda 1050 a.m 106.5 fm and now 102.3 fm I'm Tom Busby, CNBC. After years of sluggish wage growth, the typical U.S. household income finally topped its pre-recession high of last year to just over $59,000. Still, the U.S. Census says 40 million Americans live in poverty. On Wall Street, it was a record-setting day with new closing highs for the Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S&P 500. Even though today's gains were pretty modest, the Dow up 61 points, the Nasdaq adding 22. Apple unveiling three new iPhones today, but shares ended lower because the biggie, the $1,000 iPhone X, won't be available until November. The Nordstrom family nearing a financing deal with a private equity firm to take that upscale chain private. Another luxury retailer, Neiman Marcus, closing a third of its discount last call stores. And Kmart getting some heat from customers for calling its plus-size women's clothing section fabulously sized, singling out those larger sizes. Tom Busby, CNBC. Not available in all states. Hey, Carl, how is it you're always golfing? I thought you owned a business. <laughs> I own a recent Irby's robot franchise, Bob. Uh, robots? What do they do? They serve seven flavors of delicious frozen yogurt in just 60 seconds with a choice of six tasty toppings. I've got robots in malls, movie theaters, and hospitals, and the franchisers secured these locations for me. Sounds so easy. Yep, managing my robots is simple. Each takes about eh, two hours of maintenance a week.